Happy Tuesday, everybody. Welcome to my kitchen. I'm so glad that you're here. We're going to do some really easy stuff today. So actually, we're going to make my famous cauliflower queso. And it's become famous because everybody asks me to bring it to parties, to do on um, demos, just all the time. And hey, Jenny, happy Tuesday to you. And Jenny has eaten tons and tons of my cauliflower queso. So she can vouch for it even. Now, what I'm going to show you, um, you don't have to have an Instant Pot to make it, even though we are going to use an Instant Pot. So basically, what we're doing is we're taking some very simple ingredients and making that the base of the queso. So we're using cauliflower, and that provides the bulk and basically the base of the sauce. We're using a little bit of carrot that we're steaming as well, and that's just to color it to make it look Velveeta-ish. And while Velveeta is kind of a dirty word for most of us, people love the look of it. <laughs> people want their queso to look like the Velveeta they grew up with. It's so weird. I don't understand, but hey. So, but it is still pretty, and it really gives you that visual clue that it's queso that you're getting ready to eat. And I've served this a lot when I've done book signings or various events where it was not an all vegan or vegetarian event and everybody seems to love it. So if you're thinking of taking something to a barbecue that's kind of an omnivore barbecue, this is a really good thing to do. So again, we've got cauliflower, we've got carrots, and then we're using a little bit of cashew just to get that extra creaminess. Now, if you're allergic to cashews, you're not eating any nuts for whatever reason, just leave them out. You don't need to add anything else in. And all it does is add this extra creaminess. So I've cooked a little bit of them so we can see here, but I wanted to show you a couple of things. <clears throat> and we'll go ahead and I'll start steaming some cauliflower. And please um, say hi, let me know what size Instant Pot you have or if you don't have an Instant Pot and if you have any questions along the way. So this is a three-quart Instant Pot. And I have some water in here because we always cook with water in our Instant Pots. And what I cooked in before, and this is what I left a link because I knew everybody was going to ask. This is a really nice little stainless steel steamer, and I like it because it's got a handle. It's very easy to get in and out of the Instant Pot, and it's not super expensive. So, um, if you want to, that's what I would um, recommend getting. However, you may already have like some silicone steamers, and you can get these anywhere. I think I have no idea where I got this, these, but I probably got it at Home Goods or TJ Maxx for pretty cheap. Now, this green one fits really well in my six quart, but not my three quart. This fits great in the three quart. And you do have some little handles to pull off. It's going to not be as easy, and I'm more likely to spill a little bit of hot liquid. Oh, hi, Betty Ann. It's so good to see you here. And you, ha Yeah, the steamer is amazing. And I used it last time, and I know everybody had lots of questions. So when you're using a steamer, you still have to have water on the bottom because we're using that pressure cooker or manual setting, depending on what... Uh, model of Instant Pot you have. So I'm going to go ahead and just pour in some other cauliflower. And in fact, I talk about this being um, a sauce that you really can use for anything. So I'm just going to cook some cauliflower this time with just a little handful, which is about an eighth of a cool, uh, cup, just a few more cashews. And again, that's just to make it creamy. I'm going to probably make an Alfredo sauce with this. Um, but this will just give you an idea of how things go in. Hi, Jenny from Michigan. It's good to see you here. So what I usually do with this queso is I put the cauliflower on the bottom, then the carrots, and then the cashews. The reason I even have an order for that is, unfortunately, I'm using whole cashews. Please don't do that. It makes me sad. It makes me sad now, but that's what I had in my pantry. Get the broken up cashews. They're cheaper, and you don't need whole cashews for this. So what I'm going to do is then put on the lid, turn this to sealing, 
for those of you who aren't used to using your Instant Pot yet. Let's see if I can get it to where you can sort of see. This is a newer model, so I'm going to click Pressure Cook. It's already on five minutes. We're going to cook this for five minutes. And then we're going to release the pressure manually. So I'm just going to sit that away, and we might be able to see that. Hi, Janet. Oh, wow, from Salem, Oregon. I would like to be there today. I bet it's cooler than it is here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to pretend that all this happened magically while you watch. So this cooks for five minutes. I release the pressure naturally. And if the live goes long enough, then we'll get to see that too. Because I know that's one thing that people get a little nervous about. Since I'm using a three quart, I'm doing half the recipe. And the recipe is on plantbasedinstantpot.com. And so this is cooler if this because it's been cooked earlier. If this wasn't cool, I could use some pot holders to do this. So just be aware that everything that I grab isn't always what you should be grabbing. <laughs> and I also always have these cute little, I think they're microwave pot holders, but they hold the rim of the Instant Pot really well. It's easy to get things out with. So that's another handy handy little thing. Okay, so we've got this in our blender, and you don't really need a high-speed blender because we are cooking the cashews. And one of the things about cooking the cashews is that it's going to soften them up just as if they, they were soaked. And I think there might be a delivery, so just everyone ignore the dogs for a couple minutes. And what I'm going to do is... I'm going to drain this can of Rotel tomatoes while we're listening to the dog serenading us. Oh, yes, Maxie. That's Mr. Maxie. <laughs> and he likes to be the center of attention. He sounds like a little bitty guy, but he's not. Oh, and now you can, you can hear this draining. So you can use the lid. <laughs> He gets excited very easily. Now, usually I use the Rotel tomatoes with the green chilies. And this one actually has lime and cilantro in it. And if she does this, that's the big girl, Brenna, that's barking. Okay. So I'm going to take a quick, tiny break and let them outside and see if that helps. But I will be back with more cauliflower queso in moments. Okay, now they're on the deck, so perhaps they'll leave, give us a little bit of peace to finish this up. Does anybody else have loud dogs? <laughs> Jenny's met Max. Yeah, thank you, Jenny. It's whole music. So I'm just draining this, and I'm, I know I have bad doggies, but that's okay. So I'm draining the juice out of here because I'm going to use it for blending. And I've kind of left it where they could come in and out thinking that that would make them less, less whiny. I think Max is seeing a deer. <laughs> I know. So this made almost a half a cup of liquid. And again, I'm making half of the recipe. So usually I use two cans of this. Now, if this isn't enough to actually make it blend smoothly, then what we're going to do is add a little bit of extra water. But why not just use this? It's kind of, kind of where I'm going with this. And the next part about this queso is the seasonings. Hi, Diane. Yeah, she has five rescue dogs, too, and love to bark in the squirrels in the yard. It's, it's hard to know. There, a neighbor has been feeding one of the mama deers, and so it, it's not been very nice to Maxie. This is our little neurotic boy, anyhow. So, cauliflower, carrots, and cashews. Yummy for bulk and flavor, right? Or, yummy, yummy for bulk and consistency. But there's not a whole lot of flavor. If I just blended this up and gave it to you, you would not be your happiest self. 
So the first thing I want to do is use the Vegan Magic, which is nutritional yeast. And I'm going to put about a quarter cup. And this has a little measuring thing, so I know it's two of these. And if for some reason you're allergic to nutritional yeast, you could leave it out, but it would definitely suffer. I would maybe add some miso or something like that to give it some extra flavor. Hi, Colby and Robin. It's so good to see you guys here. So for this one, I'm going to use a slew of different peppers. And before I intimidate you, which I don't want to do, actually, here, I'll show you my Ravenclaw plate. Very exciting. Um, so that should calm you, get you ready. <laughs> yeah, nutritional yeast is amazing. It has such an awesome aroma, and it's just, it makes everything delicious. So with these chilies, I'm using them all for a little bit of their different flavors. However, if you want to make this right now, and you've got cauliflower, you've got carrots, you've got cashews, and you have regular old chili powder, use it. You're just going to, if you're going to do it a little bit differently, we're going to do the chilies last so I can show you how you can um, kind of get used to blending things the way you like them. Oh, Jenny laughed at my Ravenclaw play. That's magic. There's nothing to laugh at. So one of the things I know I'm going to put in here is I'm going to put smoked paprika. And I like that smoky taste it gives. And so I'm going to put in, let's see, I'm using like this much. And again, the recipe is on plantbasedinstantpot.com. I'm going to use some garlic powder and onion powder. Now, you might be wondering why I didn't just steam some onion and garlic in there with everything else. And that is mainly because it's going to taste different. So you know how a baked onion tastes kind of sweet and roasted garlic tastes kind of mellow? Well, I'm going to bring this back for a little bit of bite. <laughs> oh, she's... Should I show, Jenny, I forget what house you're in. Maybe, I, Jenny said she didn't laugh the plate, but that it would calm us. But I can show, if anybody has a request for house plates, I've got them all here. I'm happy to show you yours. And yes, I am a big geek, for anyone who might be wondering. So the onion powder and the garlic powder are going to give a little bite. And if you are one of the people who are avoiding salt for medical reasons, or for whatever reasons, I would probably double the, the garlic and, may, and, and the onion powder too, because what happens with these powders is they give you like this really good bite in your mouth, similar to, to what I feel that salt does. Obviously, it's not a one-for-one one thing, and if you can eat salt, salt is going to make this taste a little bit better, but if you can't, making that kind of connection is going to be, um, it's, it's just going to help, and especially if you're transitioning to a salt-free diet, it'll help a lot. Okay, Jenny thinks she's in House of the Rising Sun. I think Jenny does not get to see a plate. <laughs> Jenny's just like, no. We're going to put a little mustard powder. Again, that's going to give it some of that cheddary bite that we're hoping to see. Because when we see the orange cheese, right, we're expecting a certain kind of bite from that. It's going to be loud for a minute. And we're going to blend this. And I think it's going to blend just fine. And it blends up pretty fast because you have used, you've cooked those cashews. Now, there's still some things that I want to scrape down. And we're going to blend this one more time. So we're going to blend it one more time as we add the chilies, because I want to talk to you about customizing the chilies in this today. Because if you're having cauliflower queso dip, it should be exactly the way you want it. I mean, already we've got a dip that's actually a food. <laughs> it has some nutritional value. It doesn't have a bazillion calories in it. So that's pretty awesome just in and of itself. 
Yeah, you could put some vinegar in from pickled jalapenos. The vinegar is going to be salty. So Jenny was saying maybe um, maybe you could use uh, vinegar from pickled jalapenos. And usually jalapenos and pickles have quite a high sodium level because it's used in actually preserving it. Um, so, But, you know, it just depends on why you're choosing to have a certain kind of diet. Oh, Susan was trying to figure out how to do some more plant-based recipes. Well, welcome and enjoy the queso. And Vanetta, and I hope I'm saying your name right, was trying to figure out what queso was. I know, yeah, I should just say vegan cheese dip. But um, queso sounds festive. Sometimes I don't have really great reasons for why I decide what to call things. But if anybody, any of you have questions, so what we've got in here is we've gotten some cauliflower, carrots, and cashews that have been steamed for five minutes in the Instant Pot, and we pureed it with garlic powder, onion powder, smoked paprika, nutritional yeast. I'm going to go ahead and add some salt in here because I am not doing a salt-free diet, and it'll just give it a little bit of mm. I don't know if you can hear over here, I'm actually steaming some cauliflower and it's trying to come up to pressure. You can kind of hear that. So why am I using different chili powders? Because I have them. Also, I noticed that World Market, which is accessible to most people, you can get chipotle and ancho chili powder. Um, so that's kind of a nice thing to do too. Hi Jeanette, it's good to see you here. So. I'm calling this one spicy because I'm using some chipotle chili powder. And you know what? I forgot to bring over my jalapeno powder, which I adore. So I'll get that out of the cabinet in a second. Okay. So if, if you've never used these chilies before, right now I'm putting half the amount in that's called for. And that way I can kind of taste it and then see what really suits me. These little bags are hard to open. Oh, hi, Ashley. It's so good for you. I really appreciate you being here. Okay. So I'm putting half of that. Let me grab the jalapeno powder. Now, in addition to some of these... Where's my jalapeno powder? You can get these online. You can get them at Amazon. I make my own jalapeno powder, and it's just really easy. Um, what you do is you slice jalapenos, and you can get the milder, the spicier ones, put in your dehydrator, and then grind it. Oh, hi, Jill. You love queso, too? Now, the jalapeno powder, I think, really is a star in this, and I love it a lot. So what we're saying is if you didn't have the exact chilies that are in here, we're pretending these aren't the ones that are called for. So what you would do is put a little bit in, then we're going to blend it. Okay. You can kind of see some flecks of chilies. Oh, hi, Debbie. Welcome. Debbie said she's made it and she likes it. And so far, I've not heard from anyone that they don't like it. So what I do, and this is what I do when I'm developing a recipe. So let me taste it now. And that is, the beef you heard is the Instant Pot deciding that it's actually starting to cook now. Now what I will say is that Chipotle powder that I bought is a little hotter than the other Chipotle powder I have. So I'm actually going to stop this at half. I could use the full amount of the jalapeno powder. Ancho chili powder kind of has this earthy, dark, yummy um, smell to it. And I feel like it's almost smells similar to that deepness that you smell in tomato powder. It's also not spicy. Same thing for wahilo. Wahilo powder is not very spicy either. So, since it's already tasted spicy enough for me, I decided to leave out the spicier chilies and just work with the ones that were a little milder. So, 
Also, we're going to blend this one more time. So you can see, I blended it a little extra just because I wanted to make sure that the chili pepper was getting really well mixed in. Okay, so I'm going to taste this now. And that tastes good. So, point one, you don't want spicy uh, queso? Leave out the chipotle. And be sparingly, or try little by little with the jalapeno powder that you're using. When I make the jalapeno powder at home, if I get my chilies at the Hispanic market, sometimes they're spicier. If I get them from the, like the farmer's market or a CSA, oftentimes I can order mild jalapenos. And so that might be something that changes. So when I write a recipe down, I'm telling you what I did last time. And last time, my chipotle powder was not quite this spicy. So I changed it this time. And actually, I'm even going to go back into the recipe and put half a teaspoon to one teaspoon in the full recipe just to make sure that you can have that chance to make it not so spicy, too. Does that make sense? Does anybody have any questions so far? Okay. So then what I do next is I'm just going to put this in a bowl. And again, this is a half a recipe. A whole recipe makes quite a bit. Uh, but once you have it, this is good on baked potatoes, broccoli, steam, any steamed vegetables. Although, it would be kind of redundant to put it on steamed cauliflower. But you could do it because it's your kitchen. I think Cheryl would revolt after that much cauliflower. She's, she's getting better, but she doesn't love it. But she does love queso. <laughs> yes, Jenny, I am very accommodating. That's because I live with a picky eater, and my life is much better if I am accommodating. Although I will tell you, and I think Cheryl's on right now, one of the things I will do if I want something to be mine is I will make it spicy. So that's a secret trick. <laughs> Or not so secret now, trick. So once you have this base dip, you could have it just as it is. We could dip chips, we could dip vegetables, we could put this over um, cooked whole wheat elbows, pasta elbows, obviously not people elbows, and we could put some. Um, <laughs> I am a little passive aggressive sometimes. Jenny's talking about my uh, making things spicy. So. With this sauce, right the way it is right now, I could make um, a Mexi Mac. So I could um, drain some, a can of black beans, maybe put some shredded zucchini in there, some chopped zucchini, uh, some corn, put this cheese sauce on the cooked pasta, let everything warm up slightly. One thing that you want to make sure to do with this sauce, because the reason we're only cooking the cauliflower for five minutes is because we want it to be just soft enough, and that we're going to get to see the big release. Um, and Max does not like the beep on the Instant Pot, so I think you can hear him whining. It stresses him out. So... What we can do with this, so we could take pasta, I could have baked potatoes, and I was actually talking to, talking about why we cook the, the cauliflower for so long, uh, for so short a time. And what happens, and Diane, this recipe is in one of my books. There's a variation in the Ultimate Vegan Cookbook for your Instant Pot, and you can get that on Amazon. Um, and most Barnes and Nobles, but you might want to call ahead. You can order it anywhere books are sold, though. And this recipe itself also is on plantbasedinstantpot.com. And that's my new site that some of you have already been to. Hopefully, come and join. It's all going to be all Instant Pot, all plant-based, all the time. 
So back to the cauliflower. If you overcook the cauliflower, as probably everyone's done, you know when you get the stinky cauliflower? The cauliflower that kind of makes your house smell not so nice? That's because you've overcooked it. And what happens is the cells burst and they make that stinky smell. So we're doing everything in our power to make that not happen. So we're just doing it for just as little as we can and just for blending. So we know that if for some reason it sat longer, it cooked a little bit longer, you might not want to heat it up two or three times more. So sometimes I'll eat it cold out of the fridge. Sometimes I'll go ahead and toss it with some warm pasta and let that heat it up. But we don't want to like stick it in the microwave forever or have it in the oven for an hour, something like that. So if you're going to make enchiladas, this is a good topping. It might not be the best sauce. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, so for those of you who are kind of new to the Instant Pot, I'm going to take a, a quick Instant Pot break here. And this is one thing I've been trying to talk a lot about, is because people are scared of the manual release. And the manual release means I'm doing it. See? Then I'm just doing it little by little. Yeah, it, it is weird that... that Overcooking makes an odor, but it does. So see how I'm kind of doing that just a little bit? That's a really good way if you're getting used to it. You could also use a towel or a little pot holder. Or you can get, I'm going to show you guys, I've been using this dragon because it's so much fun. And I think this will show you. So this is the dragon. <laughs> Don says, bring out the dragon. Arr. I just like it because I get to make that R noise. So this is a 3D printed tube, and it's a fancy because it's a dragon. Can you just get the tubes on Amazon? Absolutely. I got this as a wonderful birthday gift. This fits over, and usually you buy one that matches your Instant Pot, so you'll have to read some information. So, and then I can do this, and it shields my hand from it. And I can't see through the steam, but you can, yeah, you can see the steam. And so it's a real safe way. I'm not getting burned. It's not going up underneath my cabinet either. It's redirecting it away from that. And it's really going to, seriously, it's a showstopper. So if you get to, um, if you get one, be sure to let your family see it. Bring friends over. It's just fun. And you know what? Everything isn't fun. So let's just make as much fun as we can. Yeah, and Jenny says, plus, a dragon. And um, and I heard that exactly in your voice. Okay, so this is still coming out a little bit. And I know on mine in particular, sometimes this will stick. Oh, love those. And see, so I'll, I might take a pen. Now, don't push hard. I just know mine sticks up a little bit. So I lightly, lightly tap it. Okay. And for those of you who may not know, these little things here, hold the lid. Is that not most amazing? And so in here now you can see what you saw earlier. This is the cauliflower. And if we look, it's not a fork. Here we go. And it just fits. So it's not smushing too much. It probably could have even been cooked three or four minutes. I'm going to cancel this. Uh, Dawn says hers does that too. And I'm sure I could clean it up a little bit better, and then that would be fine. So I'm going to set this to, back to the side. And we're back to this wonderful, oh, you didn't know that hold, held the lid? It's the best thing ever. I don't think they do it in the Lux model, but all the other models. And not only does it hold it, there's one on each side. So you can pick which angle works best for you. So for those of you who may be just joining, this is cauliflower, carrots, and cashews that have been steamed for five minutes in the Instant Pot, pureed with various spices and nutritional yeast. And um, you can get the recipe on plantbasedinstantpot.com or in my book, The Ultimate Vegan Cookbook for Your Instant Pot. These are some Rotel tomatoes that I drained because we used that liquid in actually pureeing the vegetables so that they'll have a little flavor. 
And now I'm just going to mix those tomatoes in here to give it some chunk. We talked earlier, you could use it after you chunk it up like this on anything too, but if you just kind of wanted to make this into a Mexi cheese sauce, I would maybe do it without. These tomatoes that I used actually, um, can you use, you don't have, uh, Maria, you don't have to do anything to replace the cashews. Just leave the cashews out if you don't want them. You, I would not necessarily add beans because it's actually going to make the texture less smooth. So that's, that's what I would do. So you don't have to substitute anything if you don't eat nuts or you're allergic to cashews. Um, this truly is a plant-based dish. So we're looking at cauliflower, carrots, and cashews. If you don't eat cashews, just leave them out. Carrots are for color. So also what I could do here now is, and I could add more green chilies. Typically the, um, I'll show you this again. I'm using the Rotel with lime juice and cilantro because that's the one that was in my cabinet. I usually use the one that has green chilies. So since I didn't, maybe I'd put some green chilies in there. I could also put some chopped cilantro. I could put chopped fresh tomatoes. I could put um, chopped green bell peppers. I could put chopped red onion or white onion. Anything you want. You can make it as chunky as you would like to. And just really try and experiment with things. Maria and Maria's kids are allergic to nuts. And there are lots of times you do have to replace something for nuts and recipes, but in this particular one, you're good to go. Um, and the reason nuts are in there is just to make it a little creamier. So you won't have any bad results. Um, but again, usually I put chopped cilantro and all kinds of really yummy looking things on here that I'm just not going to do because this is my lunch. And I, I don't need it to be super pretty. But do you see how that looks kind of like Velveeta? I mean, it's, it's thick, it's creamy, and it's really delicious. Now with these other, um, the cauliflower and the cashews that I steamed just to show you it cooking in a steamer and being able to do the manual pressure release, I'm going to puree that and I'm probably going to use some roasted garlic, a little salt, maybe a little bit of onion powder, and I'm going to make an Alfredo sauce with that. So this cauliflower base, with or without cashews, so if you're like Maria and you're, you have someone in your family that's allergic to nuts, you could do this just with, with cauliflower and leave out the cashews. But these creamy sauces, um, yeah, Jenny says the only difference is she's been able to tell um, that they're not there, right? It's no stretch. Flavor, okay. She's saying the flavor is still the same because the cashews don't affect the flavor. And Jenny is also not, she's an omnivore. So she's eating cheese on a regular basis. If you're not eating cheese, it's going to seem like magic to you with or without the cashews. Whenever I'm serving it to an omnivore audience, I try to add the cashews in so it gives that extra creaminess and lets them feel a little more comfortable um, trying something new. Uh, Debbie, I don't know why you lost the live feed. Um, hi, Snap Vegan. Yeah, it's good. the replay is going to be up really soon. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, so Jenny's saying the difference between regular queso and my queso is the stretch, but it's just the best regardless. So, and and I think the cashews really do help it kind of get over that hump. But again, most of us aren't eating cheese at all, so we're just happy. Um, so I guess, Jenny, you're still seeing me? Hi, Snap Vegan again. So we made queso today, and what I'd love is I would love it if you guys would post some pictures of your own queso that you make, ask some questions. That cool little stainless steel steamer basket, I've got a link to that already on the feed, in addition to the recipe. But if you have some other questions for me, let me know. I am today working on a couple of classes that I'm going to be teaching coming up, and one is going to be an air fryer class. So if you have an air fryer and you're interested, let me know. Also, if there's something you want to learn about Instant Pots or 
of air fryers or something else, let me know, okay? Well, you guys, thanks so much for joining me. I really appreciate your time. and It was great having you in my kitchen, and I will see you next week.